Awesome. Okay. Ooh, you have so many people on today. It's so fun. I know. Okay. So we're going to, I'll start off. We'll talk about metabolism. And so this week we're going to talk about just what metabolism is and how it works. And then uh, next week we're going to talk about some metabolism myths. Uh, and uh, part of part of this uh, TED talk by Deanna is uh, from Autumn's talk in the Nutrition Plus membership. Um, but I've also added a few things uh, to get in there. So uh, let's start with metabolism. Okay, so a lot of people talk about, oh, I have a slow metabolism, or I have a fast metabolism, or it's really there isn't really a fast or a slow. Okay, there isn't really this like your metabolism necessarily slows down because you're aging kind of a thing. And that's one of those things that we kind of get into, so, uh, you know, hear a lot about or just kind of assume. So we're going to get into how that works and why you might have a slower metabolism at an older age, but it's not necessarily because your age is older, if that makes sense. So, and uh, I also just want to prefer it, preface that what we're talking about today does not include things dealing with the thyroid or PCOS. You know, those are conditions that your metabolism is actually changed because of your condition. And so we're just talking about regular scenarios where, you know, just dealing with kind of regular healthy bodies and happenings. Okay. So first, when we're talking about metabolism, I'm going to throw my notes up here. So if anybody's waving at me, I might not see some of you. <laughs> okay. So there's three things that affect um, metabolism. And she did say age in there, but I think that's got to come with an asterisk. Okay. And we'll, t we'll talk about why that is, but sex and body composition also affect your metabolism. So when it comes to metabolism, you have uh, four different ways that you're burning the food that you're bringing in, okay? Four different ways that your body's converting fuel into energy. And the first one is a resting metabolic rate, or it also is called a basal metabolic rate. So this is the rate that your body is just staying alive. These are the calories you're burning to just exist in the world, okay? Keeping your heart beating, breathing, you know, organs functioning, just the base level. And that's roughly 60 to 70% of your calorie burn. Okay. And basal, like sometimes people will say basal metabolic rate. Sometimes people will say resting metabolic rate, BMR, RMR, uh, they are kind of interchangeable. A basal metabolic rate is just a little more accurate because of the calculations it uses, because it goes off of a, a, uh, it's always at the same time where you're taking that calculation in the morning. So the, a basal metabolic, metabolic rate will be a just slightly more accurate, but you can use them interchangeably. Um, so then the second way you're burning is the thermic effect of feeding. So chewing your food, digesting your food, the thing you're doing with the fuel you're putting in your body, whatever your body has to do to process it. That's roughly 10%. So, and it's not like you can really change that one a lot. <laughs> There's really not much you can do there. What's that called? So that's oh. called the thermic effect of eating. They also refer to it as TEF as its acronym. Um, so thermic effect of eating. If you chew your food longer, would that change it? Well, I think that is going to be part of one of our next ones, which is in the, it's called NEAT, and I'll explain that one in a second. So, um, so we also, so then the next category is the thermic effect of activity, right? So that's where our exercise, walking, moving around, there's also a category called non-exercising activity thermogenesis. That could be you shaking your leg when you're sitting in a chair. That could be you, you know, moving your hands or doing, you know, clicking something, you just doing whatever you do during the day, okay? Uh, the thermic effect of activity could be folding laundry, could be, you know, getting, cleaning the house, uh, making dinner. There's all kinds of activities we do in our day. And this roughly makes up that 15 to 30%. And so, um, 
a lot of people talk about doing like double workouts or things like that. And I know we've talked about that in another segment or I've mentioned that, but there's actually a lot of science to say that you can affect your calorie burn more by just adding in a walk, cleaning your house, doing active things through your day, being more active and less sedentary than just throwing in another workout. Okay. So there's, so this can be a difference maker in upping your calorie burn in, if you're doing more activities during the day. So standing instead of sitting, uh, you know, walking to the store instead of driving to the store, uh, parking further away when you do go to the store, whatever it is, right? There's all okay. kinds of little ways you can add these things in and just burn a little bit more. So let's go back to talking about this basal or uh, resting metabolic rate. So this is kind of a big one because it, well, it's seven, 60 to 70% of your calorie burn. And if you added all those up, you're gonna be somewhere between like 90 to 110% or something. <laughs> because there's a little bit of a range there. But uh, if your resting metabolic rate is really based on how much lean muscle you have. So if you're a man, you automatically come with more lean muscle by the time you've hit puberty than a woman does, okay? So that's where the sex piece comes in. Um, and if you're weight training, you are changing how many calories you're burning just living. So that's another place where you can definitely affect your metabolism and the amount of calories that you require to live. So uh, one of the big things is creating that lean muscle mass in your body if you want to up it. So there really isn't this, um, like you're, you're not necessarily speeding your metabolism up and you don't have a slow metabolism, but you may have a body composition that doesn't burn as many calories as someone else who has been weightlifting for five years and has created all this muscle mass or a, a male. That's why men can drop weight faster because they have more muscle mass to just burn it up. And then, so it's, it's like they can change things faster. They can also build muscle faster. The testosterone helps with that. And uh, so there's lots of ways that that's why there's kind of some inequality there and in how fast or slow you can do things. Okay. So is all this kind of making sense. I'm going to put my notes down here so I can see all your pretty faces. Hi, Kim. So, Hi, Kim. Okay. okay. So I have a question. Can you repeat the part about creating lean muscle and the body composition change and how you can increase your metabolism? Can you repeat yeah. that? So if you create more lean muscle on your body, if you create more muscle, you gain muscle or more of your body come, I would say it's if you're creating muscle because it's whatever your percentage of muscle would need to go up, right? Then you have more muscles burning calories and muscle burns more calories than other substances like fat in your body to, stay, to exist. A muscle requires more calories to stay intact. So then like, say if your resting metabolic rate was 1200 and I don't know the increase. So this is just using a number and you've been weight training for two years and now your metabolic rate is 1300. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, you can, you can up that resting metabolic rate. Okay. Thank you. Find out what your resting metabolic rate is. How do you find out? There's calculators online and that's mm -hmm. probably the easiest way to do it because it is quite a calculation. It takes into account a few things. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely know that it's way easier for my husband to all of a sudden drop. Yep. And, <laughs> and I'm like, what's going on here? <laughs> yeah, right. I, I used to work at Weight Watchers and when you'd have a couple coming in, no matter what they did, the husband always lost more than the wife. Yep. Yeah, I mean, they can look at a treadmill and drop, you know, 20 pounds. Mm -hmm. They can complain, I'm following it to the T and he's just playing around and he's losing anyway. Right. Not fair. <laughs> it's not fair. Next time I can come back as a man. 
Oh, well, you don't want to be a man. No, no. Just for the weight loss part. <laughs> right, right. So yeah, so there's, so of those four things we talked about, really the uh, thermo effect of uh, feeding is the thing you're, that's like 10%, right? You're one, it's tiny, and two, you're not really going to change a lot. But uh, Kathy, what we were talking about, if you're chewing more, I would put that in that neat category, the non-exercising thermogenesis. Um, that would definitely, you know, that's just more movement, right? If you're, um, you know, all those kids have like the fidget spinners, right? If you're constantly messing with something, moving something, I was a leg tapper for a long time, you know, anything like that, those, yeah. everything burns some calories. So, and, and depending on how much you're just always moving around, I mean, you, we all know the people who just don't sit still, always just, they're doing something, they're cleaning something, they're moving something, they're just always around, right? So all of that adds up to your caloric expenditure for the day. Okay. So I, I found a calculator for... Oh, okay basal metabolic rate and mine just quick says gender height weight age yeah is 1260 yeah as my resting rate i feel like when i did mine mine was somewhere around 15 or 1600 mm -hmm. yeah i just mine's 1703 okay so you just did yours as well yeah yep. so that's a there you go uh, so oh. then, so think about that, right? Like I, I know we've all kind of heard like people be like on a 900 calorie, 1200 calorie. Oh. That's why it's not for everybody, right? You definitely like, that's not even meeting your needs. So if you're not under a doctor's supervision doing that kind of a low calorie expenditure, you're not gonna feel very good one, but two, I mean, you'd have to have some kind of medical aid with it because that's just not, you're not even like eating enough to function. So I really struggled with this, with um, trying to figure out what my caloric intake was, even with working out, and then what my caloric intake for food and nutrition would best be to like meet my fitness goals. And back in December, I had a friend about a year and a half ago, she was wearing this thing called a whoop strap. And yeah. I was like, what is that? And she said, oh, it's my whoop. And I'm like, okay, well, what does that do? The whoop. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, fantastic. What is it? And she explained, basically, it's a fitness tracker, but it's not like there's no face on it. Like, it doesn't tell me how many steps I'm getting in. It doesn't like it's not it's not like your Apple Watch, which I have an Apple Watch. And I really I really enjoy my Apple Watch. But finally, in December, when I was really, I was kind of getting frustrated fitness wise and just not meeting goals. And I didn't understand and I knew where it was coming from, but I wanted more information. So my husband and I both got whoop straps. And I will tell you that it's been a game changer for me because it tracks my caloric burn every single day. And I can see like the other day I hadn't worked out yet. This was yesterday and I had burned less than a thousand calories. And then by the time I went to bed, my caloric burn shot up to over 1600. And so that's really helpful for me in the kitchen, but it tells everything. And it really just tracks everything from average heart rate to resting heart rate to your recovery. And it, for me, it's been a game changer fitness wise, and I really, really enjoy it. And I'm a data person. So I want all of the numbers and all the information, but that for me has been fantastic. Um, so yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I have a halo and it does the same thing. Okay, yeah. Um, and it's, yeah, I really enjoy looking at it too because boy, there's some days where I'm like 2200 and I'm like killing it, right? And then other days where I'm like at 1700 and I'm like, oh, it might be why I feel a little fluffy today because yesterday <laughs> I had a little extra. So, you know, it's just, it's really fascinating. And, it, you know, I mean, it, it can be such great data as long as you're not using it to like berate yourself right? Or feel guilty about it. Cause that's not the point. It's literally just the, the numbers. It's the math of what's happening in your body and uh, it can be so useful. Yeah. It's kept me encouraged and inspired. And when I see that I get like a certain caloric burn, I'm like, how do I go further? Can I do maybe like a 10 minute this, or maybe I can get on the bike and do something. And so it's kept me motivated, um, which has been really great. And I've been noticing a vast difference from when I started using it as a kind of a guide. Yeah, that's awesome. Because 
you know, really, I mean, our nutrition calculators are great. They're great beginning starting points. I mean, your weight times 11 and then adding in an average burn, but that doesn't take into account how many years you've been working out, you know, how much muscle you already had or how, how you're burning calories and, and really what you're doing in the rest of your day. I mean, it makes a generalized guess of that. That's what the 11 is. If you're extremely active, it would be a 12, but it's, um, that's why it, it can be really helpful, especially if you feel like you want to get to that next level or you've really already, you know, kind of nailed things down, but it's still not quite there. And that can definitely be the extra data you need to know what's happening. Cool. All right. Let me see if I, what else I have on my notes here. I'm going to make sure I didn't miss anything. Um, Oh, okay. So I just, let's go back to this whole idea of age thing too, because I know, I mean, how many times have, I mean, I'm sure everybody's heard it, thought it right. Like, well, I'm getting older. So my metabolism is slowing. So age really, are you acting the same way you did as a teen in your movement? Probably not. Right. Are you acting oh. even the same as you did in your twenties? right? So probably not, right? So as we get older, we tend to be doing less things naturally. So that's the slow down in your calorie burn. Not necessarily that all of a sudden I'm 40. That means my body says, oh, we only burn this many calories now or something like that. It's more of a progression of just slowing down your activity levels, you know, maybe where you would have done a bunch of house cleaning because your kids were little and now they're older so they get to do some of the chores right or whatever right I wish right <laughs> I'm trying to get them to do the chores. so but you know things like that like I remember when our um it was funny because when I, we had taken our dog to the vet and he had lost some weight and they're like oh what are you doing you lost some weight and I'm like well we haven't done anything different and he's like oh well, how old are your kids and I said oh and this was like maybe fourth or fifth grade and he's like Oh, that's what it is. He's not eating as much food off the floor now because they're not dropping as much food because when they were toddlers, right. Then he had all the food he wanted. So, you know, there's just this natural progression. And so it's not necessarily to blame it. The fact that we're older, that you can't burn the calories. It's likely that your activity level is naturally less. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All right, so okay. I think I covered everything on my notes. Does anybody have any questions or things they wanna talk about with metabolism? Well, I have a question and this might be a stay tuned for next week type thing, but so you also hear things like, oh, if I eat hot sauce or if I eat something really hot and spicy, that increases my metabolism and now I'm gonna lose more weight or whatever the case is or burn more calories. Yeah. How, does, how does that come into play or is this, should we wait till next week? Well, we can, we, I can answer it quickly. It doesn't okay. come to play. It's mm -hmm. not been scientifically proven. I mean, those things do up your, they can up your heart rate a little bit when you're doing them. Um, but do they like, does it benefit you to continually eat hot sauces? No, like it doesn't do a noticeable difference. Gotcha. It, it is one of her myths for next week. So we'll cover it. Right. In more detail. I figured. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I think it makes sense what you were saying about how as you get older, your habits change. And I can remember growing up, like my family would always be like, oh, you can eat whatever you want, but it's going to catch up to you one day and, you know, it'll catch up and you can't do that forever. And, you know, when you're younger, you're just kind of like, I mean, I don't, I don't know, past the prize. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but definitely like your activity level has changed. And when that was really, I think astute point, you know, what was I doing in my teenage years versus my twenties versus now in my thirties. And it looks I mean, it's a good thing that it doesn't look the same because um, it'd be terrifying, but it's, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. It's funny because I'm a little bit of the opposite. Um, I mean, I definitely don't eat in the same way, but um, I am so much more active now than I ever was yeah. in my, especially late yeah. 20s and 30s. Um, so I can put away some healthy food, right? I can put away some, <laughs> some good food, <laughs> but I still feel the bleh from you know, the greasy stuff and all that, but. All right, good. Well, we can go into the next uh, subject into labels or if anybody has questions about anything. I, I have a question about 
chicken and beef. You always hear that white meat chicken, like chicken breast is the best. And like something like, like a, a, a greasy hamburger or a steak with a lot of fat would be the worst. And I think I asked you something like this, Dina. Where does dark meat chicken with skin fall on that scale? Is it closer to the white meat chicken because it's chicken or is it closer to the beef? Being well, big? I can't give you an exact. If you have skin on, it's going to be closer to the beef. But, really? it, but dark meat, like thighs and chicken yeah. breast, are, it's a pretty small difference in the fat that's actually in the meat. So we're talking about like, not necessarily the fat that could be on the outside that you can cut off. It's the, you know, the lean meats are because it's lean in that muscle tissue of the meat, right? Where beef tends to not be lean or you're not gonna be able to chew it very well. Um, that's why the fat's there, right? It makes it easier to chew and it's more delicious. It's more flavorful. But chicken breasts and thighs are really, it's a small difference. And especially the amounts we're eating. Um, I honestly, I use thighs a lot because I, I don't, I, I think they're more flavorful and taste better. And I like to grill them versus um, chicken breasts. So. Me too. So it's the skin that makes it worse. The meat it's is got so all the fat and really not a lot going on for, I mean, it's got no protein and it's just, yeah. Yeah. That's, so that's, the meat itself is not so big. If you have right. dark meat, you like bone the skinless thighs. And most of the time, our, my, the ones I get are usually pretty trimmed up, but you can trim them up a little further so that um, you don't have any extra fat on them. And then they're, they're pretty, you know, they're pretty close to a chicken breast. If you cooked the thighs with the skin, but then didn't eat the skin. You'd still have the fat in the pan. The so it depends on how much of the pan juices would stay on the breast and the thigh. Well, what if you grill it? All, all the juices fall out, but still some of it goes into the meat, I guess. I would think some of it stays on there. Yeah. Okay. I mean, if you do it, maybe it's not an all the time. Maybe it's just a sometimes because you really like it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know if you're going to throw yourself completely off, you know, having it sometimes if that's what you really enjoy. I think that's better to have some of the things you enjoy. Yeah. You know, then okay. suffer. Like if I, we don't really enjoy chicken breast. So it's like my husband considers that like a punishment if I'm <laughs> making the both of it too. My husband says he just won't eat it. And I've made it a few times trying to do different things, but it always tastes like cardboard. Yeah. It, chicken breasts are tricky. I mean, uh, most of the time they get cooked too long and then they're just dry and a little bit rubbery. Yeah. So I found if you slice it, like when I do grill it, I will like, you know, cause sometimes those breasts are so thick. So I will slice them in half so that the filet is more similar in size all the way through. And then okay. I'll grill it that way. So that way it cooks more evenly and you don't, you know, you're not getting some part of it that's like super done and then some part that's barely done. Uh -huh. And then or I if you cook them in an, in an Instant Pot with either a little bit of water and a bouillon or the um, low sodium. Uh, Deanna, help me out here. <laughs> low sodium. Sauce? Yes. Yes. Well, that's yes. Um, if you do that, they, it's, it's perfect. It's not dry. It's nice and moist. And it even gets into like um, a shredded where you can shed it really easily. Um, it's better than baking it because it keeps it, 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 it does not dry out and it takes less than 10 minutes on that part. To boil it? You to, do if, it if you had an Instapot. Oh, an Instapot. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. The That's how I do all my chicken now. We bake ours, but I mean, we, we do the Instapot, but we bake ours and we just cover it and it keeps the moisture in it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, and we've done that for years and then shred it with a KitchenAid mixer. Oh yeah. I've seen that done. Or some people do it with those handheld mixers too. Yeah. yeah and either way it works just fine. The other thing I want to ask about is how bad or good is chipotle? Like if you got a bowl. And yeah, you like you mean the restaurant? Yeah. I think it could, there's a lot of good choices there. Um, you just like, you just have to tell them what you want because if they do rice and beans, you've now got two carbs, right? 
And, and sometimes those spoonfuls, I, I don't know how they would measure. Um, so, you know, sometimes I get, maybe if I get both plus the meat and I usually get lettuce and then, and pico de gallo. So I throw all that kind of stuff. I would think their pico de gallo doesn't taste sweet at all. So I would assume it's going to be a, a green. Um, and then I just eat like half the bowl. So it's like, maybe you get the things you want, but you only, you plan on just having half for that meal and then half for the next yeah. meal. Um, but now they have, now they have, um, cauliflower rice they do mm -hmm. i haven't been there since they did that but that sounds really good I just had it tonight they had cauliflower rice and i had the chicken some lettuce tomatoes it had a little bit of corn and the guacamole and some peppers you got and they usually do a pretty good scoop of guacamole so you probably got a couple blues there yeah <laughs> and the there are blues. <laughs> i know and then we I love our blues <laughs> Oh, yeah, guacamole and cheese you got two blues there i know it yeah well so i gotta do one or the other yeah i mean that's a good place to really you can manage it pretty well there because you can you can say um uh, you know like i've asked for less rice before or more beans or you can do more meat or whatever it is you can yeah. be pretty specific with them um and it is all it seems pretty fresh to me i mean it all seems like they have pretty good quality so do you think they don't add any junk into their stuff? Is it more fresh than like other? I do think places? that's true. Yeah, I do think that's true. And I would bet you could go on their website and see exactly what they do put in things. Um, but it, they do make things right away. So it's not like it's just microwaved and then added to your bowl. You know, they're back there cooking the meat, you know, the, and they marinate it. Um, and I don't think they're adding, you know, a lot of extra stuff. And they do have the calorie counts on most things you can see you know how it is okay all right thanks yeah they they will um do things separately too so if you say i want everything on the side you can do that and they'll put them in separate containers oh interesting mm -hmm. to know. okay thanks yeah so that way you can go home and measure it measure it yourself oh that's a great yeah that's a great idea mm -hmm. oh yeah. okay and if you don't want to do everything, you can at the very least say, put the rice on the side and they will do that. Uh-huh. Oh, okay. Thanks. Perfect. All right. Did anybody bring labels? So I, I have one. Oh, go ahead, Mariana. Oh, no, go ahead, Sue. Oh, all right. So someone reminded me today about chia pudding. I don't know if you can oh, see yeah. this. So chia seeds. So I said, well, this is a great one because I've been really paying attention to the carbs that I eat lately. So this is eight grams of fat, 10 grams of carbs, and 10 grams of dietary fiber, and four grams of protein. So, and then I mixed it with, so I did two tablespoons with a half a cup of coconut milk. So and that's I'm gonna orange, right? The two so I'm sorry. That would be an orange, right? I think the chia seeds fall into an orange. Is it considered an orange? That's what I wasn't sure. I think. So would that be one orange, two tablespoons? Uh, I think two tablespoons, but I'm gonna look it up really quick. Yeah, I, I think okay. that is an orange. Is, two is it? Okay. So that'll be my breakfast tomorrow, and um, it'll be quite yummy. It has a lot of great nutrients, micronutrients, mm -hmm. and yeah, I mean, they're definitely a, um, a good, good power food. Yeah. So sometimes people go like the fact that you have it measured is perfect, right? Because the, the only problem with it is that it is more caloric when you're eating higher amounts of it. So it can mm -hmm. easily turn into something like a healthy fat where you're getting more than you think you're getting. So when I measure this, I would measure one orange and then whatever the milk that I put in, correct? Or do I measure it after the fact? I would measure it on, well, uh, let's see if it says here on the food list. How yeah, it, I'm gonna look it up. So it just says chia seeds in the orange. Um, it does not say... I mean, I would, I would think it's chia seeds measured dry. Okay. 
and then put in. Okay. I use that chia pudding as a dessert sometimes and I put like cocoa and a little bit of honey in it. And then it's like, kind of reminds me of tapioca pudding, but it's chocolate. It's mm -hmm. very good. <laughs> nice. I love it. Nice. And there's quite a few chia seed recipes on the blog. I know. Um, it's a, I, I feel like I've seen some puddings on there and then maybe mm -hmm. something in the fix uh, I made the fixate. I made the fixate chia seed pudding. It was um, delicious, but it wasn't very sweet at all. So I ended up putting uh, whipped cream on the top or something like that. Very good. <laughs> I kind of defeated it, but so just, if you're prepared, don't expect it to, you know, to be sweet, then you're, then you're golden. golden. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Perfect. All right, Lily, you're on Mike. Do you have a label? Um, I do. I have, so I don't, we're getting ready to go, obviously. So I'm looking for easy things that I can microwave or, so um, I don't always eat turkey sausage, but sometimes I like to have one. So this is um, all natural turkey sausage, fully cooked. Uh, it has, um, let's see, four lengths is 90 calories. And let's see, 4.5 grams of fat, 40 cholesterol, 420 sodium. So the sodium is really high. Carbs are two grams, proteins, 10 grams. So, and it says it's just turkey water, potato starch, salt, dextrose, sugar, and spices. But it says that there's no percentage of sugar though, even though it says it's in there. Um. Turkey water? <laughs> no. no, turkey is the first ingredient and then water. Oh. <laughs> Not turkey water? I'm like, I thought that was already a thing. Uh, so that sounds to me like you could have six probably to get to a red. Because 90 calories is a little light, I think. And 10 calories, like I think a red is supposed to be somewhere between 12 and 20. Um. So I'm thinking maybe you could have a little more than the serving size. Oh, you're on mute again. I muted myself, I guess. Um, yeah, it's, they're fully cooked and it seemed like a good, a good quick option for in the RV. Yeah, so. definitely. Yeah. And then I have, um, I don't, these just seem like a big fat gimmick when they say protein across the top. <laughs> I mean, it's like kind of in your face, like, come on, look at us. But so I was curious what your thoughts were on these types of wraps versus tortillas versus like just a regular corn tortilla or, I mean, this one has 70 calories per, per tortilla, three grams of fat, uh, carbs are 15, fibers 12, and protein 7. Well, and there's a good amount of fiber. Yeah, that's what I was surprised. What's in there that's making that fiber? Well, the first ingredient is water. Then it has modified wheat starch, pea protein, whole wheat flour, vital wheat gluten, vegetable shortening, uh, soybean oil, gluten isolate, and then 2% less of salt, sodium, and baking soda. Hmm. So I, I don't know. They seemed like they were actually okay because of the amount of fiber in them and the amount of protein. Right. Yeah. It. I don't know. I mean, the pea protein, um, and I can't remember what the other protein source was, but those should be fine. I, I don't really... Um, subscribe to always just eating stuff because of the protein in it right mm -hmm. but but that seems like it kind of also has a good amount of fiber and might be an option you know as an alternate to a, a carb based you know. uh, yeah basically I thought it was a better carb than just a right. regular white tortilla yeah I guess I would try it and see how you like it yeah. do we subtract the fiber from the carb to get the net carb so it's only no. three we don't, we're looking for the ratio. So you should have one gram of fiber minimum to 10 grams of carbs. 
Oh, okay. So it's just saying that it's um, that it's got enough fiber um, so that you can it helps you stay more full, <clears throat> and then it also helps with the blood sugar ingestion as you're eating the food. So uh, your glycemic index and how your body takes in um, the nutrients and the way it reacts to things. Mm -hmm. Lily, don't you have anything with liquor today? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> Going good old fashioned. Good old fashioned Jack Daniels. Are you, are you an imposter? What did you do with Lily? <laughs> I, I couldn't find anything. I was I actually was racing to the store before this and i we've been super busy just trying to get everything ready. But um so I I didn't find anything new and exciting today. Okay. So. When are you leaving? Tomorrow morning or tomorrow oh. at some point. Okay. Might be eleven fifty nine p.m., but we'll see. it'll be tomorrow. <laughs> we'll see you on the road next week. Yes, yes. Okay. From from uh, somewhere, we'll see. We'll, we'll be in see actually. We'll be in. We'll You're be in Big Ben National Park, I think, in Texas, in the middle of nowhere. Okay. So our internet might be horrible, but we'll be there. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I have a question. What? So I got these also. These are um, veggie spirals yeah they're um it's just spaghetti squash is there any difference between actually cooking it yourself and getting something like this other if the ingredients are just spaghetti squash no and in fact it can be more nutrient dense because it's typically frozen foods are harvested at the peak of ripeness and then fr flash frozen right away Whereas foods that you're getting in your grocery stores are picked before ripeness and then have travel time and no long, you know, they could be sitting there for a while. So um, yeah, frozen foods are a great option as you know, if they're not adding in extra stuff. Yeah, this is just spaghetti squash. So yeah, I, was like, yeah, I, mean, I bought I that same thing fun. today. Oh, perfect. Yeah, I always have like cauliflower rice. If we run out of that in the freezer, I don't even know what to do anymore. I've so, never tried yeah. that. I'm afraid to. I, you know, oh, I so good. it real quick and like it's a hash brown, but with less oil and just saute it. And like I, um, I made a cheesy chicken enchilada bake thing that was, I think I put it in our group, Joy. And, yeah. you know, it was, I just put it, I put that on the cauliflower rice and it mixes into anything and it's a great filler and I don't notice it. And I put like, I had it in my shake today with a banana and vanilla Shakeology. Now what's the purpose of putting the cauliflower in the shake? Well, it's just another green for me. Oh, okay. So it's, I usually have a green and a purple along with my Shakeology and uh, it does make it more creamy. Like I do all the vegan ones. And so it does, and I don't, I just add water, but it does make it a little more creamy and thick. Um, versus just water or like my other go-to is cucumber and uh, tropical fruit mix that I get from God. Um, <laughs> a good way to sneak in a vegetable. It is, yep. And I will say this, we put it in our taco meat. Like, so if we have beef or turkey mm -hmm. um, ground meat, we'll put it in there before we add the seasonings. And then my kids don't know that there's cauliflower oh. rice in it either. Mm -hmm. That it's is a good it. idea. <laughs> I do that with my burritos too. I add some in with the, the turkey. Yeah. I do that for my husband. So he eats his vegetables too. There you go. I have an eight year old <laughs> that eats vegetables. Perfect. <laughs> all right. Let's, are you, is that all of them, Lily? Uh, I could go find some more if you want. <laughs> no, I think Mary sure. has one. So we'll go to Mariana. <laughs> I have one. So when I did 80 day obsession and they like, she reopened the refeed days. Oh, yeah. I fell in love again with, um, graham crackers Yeah. and I've been eating them usually like at the end of the night, if I want something sweet, but I'm not like, I try not to keep cookies in the house and we just finished the last two boxes, only two boxes of Girl Scout cookies in the house. So that's good. Um, but I was, um, ever since last week when we had the conversation about sourdough bread and Bev had mentioned um, unbleached flour, I've now become very sensitive to seeing that in my ingredients list. But really quick, so these are just the honey made, no high fructose corn syrup, eight grams of whole grain right on the package on the front. And it says, 
this was surprising. It's eight crackers, which is two cracker sheets. And I only normally eat one sheet because that's what was allotted in 80 day. And the serving size is two sheets for 130 calories, which kind of knocked me over. I was like, that's a bit much, but total fat, three grams, sodium is 160 milligrams. Total carbs were 24 grams and dietary fiber is one gram. So it doesn't have the full ratio, which you had mentioned. Right. Um, it has eight grams of sugar, but it's included. It's not at, it, or excuse me, it includes the added sugar, which that is the added sugar of eight grams. Because when you read the ingredients, it also has two grams of protein, but the ingredients are unbleached, enriched flour, um, gram flour, sugar, canola oil, honey, a leavening agent, salt, soy lectin, and artificial flavor, which is now a little terrifying, but here we are. So <laughs> yeah, it's funny, right? Because on the front, you saw eight grams of whole grains. So you're thinking, oh, this is going to be good. We right, I'm like, this we can't can be that good. bad, can it? Yeah. Huh. Those marketers, man, they're good. Yeah. I guess it, I guess it could be worse. It's not like I'm chowing down on them every single day. Totally. Um, yeah. So and I will say, uh, take two of those sheets, two, not the full sheets, two crackers, put a little peanut butter, a little cauliflower rice, and a little banana in the shake. It's delicious. I'm going to check that out. I like that. Normally, I'm just actually, I'm like standing at the cupboard like a mouse, eating the sheet, drinking water, and then like heading to bed to go brush my teeth. Yeah, so there's, it's a, like there's a peanut good. butter shakeology, peanut butter cookie shakeology recipe that uses the graham crackers, and it's amazing. Okay, I'll have to check that out. Well, there goes my weekend. I'll this past it. weekend, I made a banana bread with coconut sugar, and it was okay. Yeah, I'll put it in the group um, under the recording with the, okay. sorry, the shakeology yeah. recipe. It's so good. Like, my 14-year-old loves it. Nice. I'll have to you, check that out. Have you also made your shakeology into a pudding and then put it on the graham cracker? Oh, there's a good idea. Oh, no, I didn't even know I could turn my Shakeology into a pudding. Yeah. Oh, yes. yeah. Have you seen, it's so did good. you see the video from Amala yesterday? Oh my gosh. <laughs> that was so, who posted that? He's hilarious. Kim, did you post did. that? Oh, you did. That was so funny, but it made me want to go. So I bought ba bananas last night. He's, uh, he's in Riviera <laughs> right now, which is where- Is that where he is? Was supposed to be, yeah. Oh my gosh. So How good. do you make it a pudding? Do you put it in the freezer? No, I think you just do less liquid. Um, it, mm -hmm. There's lots of rest. I'll see if I can find some recipes for that one too, because I know there's a few on the blog. So I'll post that under the recording too. You can use less liquid. You can use yogurt instead. Like sometimes I'll use um, like a unsweetened Greek yogurt and put my Shakeology in that, um, especially if I need extra protein and I'm not getting enough protein. Um, so I'll do that and that makes it very creamy, um, but you can just use less water. So, yeah, you can, you can also add like just a teaspoon of, uh, of nut or seed butter. Mm. And that is definitely, I've done all those things <laughs> multiple times. <laughs> I just, we're all going to go get graham crackers now. We're all going to have graham crackers tonight. <laughs> mm -hmm. I actually tried it on, um, these rice thins they're huh? like they're like rice cakes oh rice stackers my husband just corrected me um <laughs> they're called rice stackers and they're like super super thin and um they're from I think they're from Bob's Red Mill are they from Bob's Red Mill I don't know we can I, yeah we can, can only like find them at one place. yeah they're like a rice cake but they're like super super thin oh yeah, it's, you know, I love I live close to Bob's Red Mill. <laughs> really? I do. Headquarters. That sounds like magic to me. <laughs> I, <didn't see> <laughs> I have a question about sugars. Yeah. If I'm looking at like something that says total sugars three grams includes two grams added sugars and sugar alcohol nine grams. What? Yeah. So, um, so there's going to be naturally occurring sugar that just happens because of the ingredients. There's yep. the added sugars that they have added to the ingredients. And then okay. alcohols, uh, like, uh, I can never say this right. Bev left to correct me. Ethritol, I think is how it's it. You know, there's, there's 
sweeteners that are alcohols that aren't caloric, but they're still a sugar okay. alcohol. So sugar alcohol, even though it says nine grams, that doesn't add to the total? Like, because total sugar is only says three. Right, it's not uh, very caloric, but it is okay. an ingredient and that's how it's sweetened. Okay. And it's not like um, a lot, I mean. So is there like something I should stay below, like, or watch for? I don't really have an answer for that one. Um, I, I would say you should tend to not have very much of it in your ingredients, you know what I mean? Like you should stick with whole foods where it's just naturally occurring sugars and there aren't added yeah. or alcohols. Okay. Um, but it's it's something that like, if you have the choice of, you know, something with a sugar alcohol, it may be better than having the full sugar alternative. It just kind of depends on the source. I just have to grab snacks for like at work. So I grab, I try to like Atkins, yeah. Little snack bars so I can grab it just real quick at work. And I've noticed a lot of them just saying sugar alcohol and added sugars and total sugars. And I'm like, how the hell am I supposed to keep track of all this? <laughs> yeah, that's how they're get, making it taste sweet, right? Um, mm, but yeah. it does still react with your body differently. I mean, your body still has to process it and deal with it. So, okay. yeah. So if you can't pack ahead of time, you know, fruits and vegetables or something like yeah. that to have in bags, that would be even better. Well, I, I do that too. Like I pre, I do my, I get all my food ready and I have like red peppers and hummus and, um, but I like to pack like just like a protein bar for yeah. like 3 p.m. when I'm like on my last uh, leg, yeah, making right. it another two hours. <laughs> What were you gonna say, Jen? I was gonna say sugar alcohols can wreak havoc on the belly if you're not careful. Yeah. Like if you eat a ton of them, they can cause gastro issues. Okay. Just yeah. It's it's not. I I don't uh, know if it's the way your body processes it, but I remember back in the day when people were doing Atkins and you would eat so much of it, and then people would get stomach issues from it just because I don't think your body can process it. Ah, yeah, that, yeah. that kind of explains a few things. Okay, see, actually <laughs> <laughs> explains more than a few things. Right. <laughs> well, maybe we solved a problem there. Right. Yes. Yeah, that's very, very common with sugar alcohols. Okay. Very common. Yeah, but like maybe um, I somebody brought a RX bar. Like, I mean, the beach bars are really good. Those yeah. are good options, but then the RX bars are very simple ingredients. Though processed, they're still simple, like the ingredient list itself, and they're sweetened generally with dates, right? Which are an extremely sweet fruit, and so you're it's coming from a natural source instead of um, sugar alcohols, which basically sugar al alcohols are very intensely sweet like overly sweeter than regular occurring fruits so they can cause you to like crave sweeter and sweeter than what you can get from a regular fruit if you're consuming them on a regular basis if that makes uh, sense it does Yep. So go maybe check out some bars too, where you can read all the ingredients, right? Because if they're words we don't know, then it's likely things our body doesn't want to digest. Right, yeah. Well. yeah. All right, Mel, it looks like you've been patiently waiting with your label. <laughs> That's okay. The questions are good. Um, so I have two. I actually have a turkey sausage one as well. Um, I'll do this one first. This one is a Johnsonville turkey um, sausage and it's 90 calories for two servings or for two lengths. Sheboygan, Wisconsin. Oh, is that where that's from? Yeah. <laughs> so this one is nitrite and nitrate free and it even has the minimally processed on the, on the front of the packaging. Um, and then calories from fat is 45 per serving, which is two. Um, total fat is five grams, 
saturated fat is one and a half. There's no trans fat. Cholesterol is 40 milligrams. Sodium is 280. Um, total carbs is one. And then it says less than one gram. There's no fiber and there's sugar. So it says less than one sugar. Um, and then protein is nine grams per serving. Okay. And what was the calorie count on the serving? 90? Uh, 90, 90 calories per serving or 45 calories per link. So it sounds like you're probably at like three links for a rest. Which is what I do for, a, yeah. for a, in, in the morning. Cause I'll do that bell peppers, broccoli and eggs for my breakfast. Um, and I'll do three links and, and mix it up. Yeah. So, um, and then my other one, this is what I do for brown rice and quinoa to get like a car, like a healthy carb. Um, and this I get, you can get this at Costco in the, in like a bulk packaging. I think there's like five or six packages. Um, and this one is one cup is one serving, um, 220 calories per serving. Total fat is five. There's no saturated fat, no trans fat no cholesterol, sodium is 300, which is I think a little bit high. Um, potassium is 370, total carbs is 37, dietary fiber is seven, sugars is one and protein is eight grams. Okay, yeah, that sounds pretty good. It's funny because I think Robin, because that's the seeds of change, right? And Robin had one. Yeah. No, this is kind of... organic ancient grain. Oh, brand. it's ancient grain, okay. because. It's similar, right? Yeah. But like they must have just had a different makeup or percentage of one or the other because hers was a lot less fiber. Yeah. But by, you know, for servings. So you really have to check because I would have assumed it was going to be, you know, similar to what we had already seen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. And it, it even breaks it down. Calories yeah, per gram is fat. So it, it even breaks it down here. It says calories per gram. If yeah. you're, um, like really paying attention to your, to your macros. There's nine, there's nine and then carbohydrates is four and protein is four. So, but if you're not really paying attention to them, it's just gibberish. Yeah. yeah so is, it's that have, uh, one cup. is that two yellows? It is two yellows. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Yeah. But it is a good fiber ratio. So it would be considered a, you know, a good fiber filled carb or a, a yellow that fits the list. And is this what you were talking about, Deanna? Yeah. So so the, the the change. Price, right? Yeah. What's your carb to fiber ratio? Because so this says total carbs 47 grams and then dietary fiber is three grams. Yeah. So I think that one probably has more brown rice than quinoa mm -hmm. ratio wise. And maybe the other one has more, has more quinoa. quinoa. Yeah. Is quinoa a carb or a protein? It's a carb, but it uh, it is a good source of uh, other macro and micronutrients. Okay. Yeah, but it is a carb. Okay. So this also has amaranth in it. Oh yeah, yeah. So that's quinoa, a brown rice, and amaranth yeah. with garlic seasoning. That's so that's why it's probably got more of the fiber in it. Yeah. So. And I don't use a whole yellow, I mean, which I feel like that would probably cut it down to maybe one yellow, but I don't use a whole one because just eat, eating one whole yellow, I actually get kind of full on this besides what else I eat. So I actually, I, I cut it back. Yeah, perfect. So. Uh, did anyone else bring anything or we can save it to next week because we're already at six. I don't want to keep everybody too late. <laughs> six, who's at six? Oh, yeah. I'm at nine. It's nine <laughs> o'clock here. <laughs> yeah. All right. Now we do have, oh, the thin snacker. Okay. So those yeah. are the rice cakes. Oh, and they're red yeah. rice oh. and quinoa. Yeah. They have multiple ones. And hmm. um, honestly, they're really not like high in, um, in calories, but like, so, or they're really not high in protein either. Um, but so basically like a serving is four cakes, which I've never actually had four cakes at one point in time. Um, and, uh, calories for a serving are 100, um, total fat is one gram, total carbs, 23 grams, two fibers, zero sugars, two protein. So, I mean, they're not like super nutritious, but you know, if you get, if you take like two of these 
and uh you know you can like sandwich them together with whatever yeah it sounds like a great carrier right if you have yeah. something else you want to yeah exactly i've used i've i put hummus on it <laughs> um what else have i done oh now, is hummus. that a carb so yes. it, it is yeah but it is. it's um like four of them wouldn't even get to a full yellow yeah and i don't even as i said i like two of them is perfect like if you want to just do like um like a a teaspoon of sun butter or peanut butter or something and sandwich them together and you've got yourself like a mini peanut butter sandwich I mean they're reasonably sized I mean they're like the size of this box mm -hmm. so it's not like it's tiny right so it's it's really yeah I like it I like them I check but and what brand could, is, that? is that that doesn't look like Bob's though is it no it's um it's Lundberg it's oh. actually the brand that I use for rice yep this yep. is like yep. my yeah, like I use their um, organic rice. That's, I love the rice. Do you um, find those in the cracker aisle or in like the organic area? Well, I didn't find them. My husband found them because he went to Whole Foods. Where did you get them from? Oh. Yeah, but I mean, I where? Know. He doesn't now. Um, they were probably around crackers, maybe rice cakes. I. He doesn't I looked, remember. I asked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he doesn't remember. We only have like two two Whole Foods in the St. Louis area, and that's like 45 minutes from us. So, and they don't carry them at any of like the local stores. So maybe just go to Amazon. <laughs> Might be easier, even though I'm like, I never say go to Amazon, actually. <laughs> Well, Lily's in the land of Amazon and Whole Foods, so she'll be fine. I'm sure she'll be able to locate it. Except I'm leaving it. <laughs> oh, now. Oh, oh night. Nice. Yeah. It's only six o'clock. Get in your car. Oh, those look <laughs> delicious. Yeah, they really are. And they, and he said, I remember him messaging me and he's like, he's like, oh, they have this one and they have this one and they have this one. And I'm just like, I don't know, just pick one. I really don't even care. I just wanted to try it for one time. I saw a friend on Instagram and she's like, she uses them to make her kids sandwiches on them and, um, and her kids love them. So, um, I was like, well, shoot, I, I haven't had a PB and J in like a lifetime. And, um, and that used to be like one of my favorites. Not that I had the J on there, although I have tried it like with strawberries you know peanut butter and strawberries I've done that with the cloud bread too yeah that was interesting <laughs> joy where are you are you in my time zone I am I'm in New Hampshire oh, okay yeah Kim yeah. your time zone too uh well yeah. Sophie, Robin, it's it. not very close she's right on the edge of the east coast time frame and Robin, Robin's up there too Oh, Robin, you're East Coast too? Okay. Yep. I don't know where you are, Jen. I'm in Ohio. Oh, okay. And Marianne is in Where are you, Robin? Where? Maine. Oh, oh okay. great. Hello, neighbor. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm New York, so I'm a little further down. Oh, a little <laughs> further down. All right. Well, should we grab a picture and then we'll uh, let everybody go to bed or go eat? Can I ask one question? Yeah. Okay. And maybe we've covered this before and I just forget. I am a huge coffee drinker. Yeah. I have tried to cut out creamer. I can't do it. Yeah. So like, what do you guys use in your coffee that still makes it taste good, but you're not killing your diet? I use half and half and maple syrup. So I- Oh, that's- Okay. Um, maple syrup. Yep. <laughs> wow. Uh, no, okay. Nobody messes with my coffee. Yeah. I know, and that's not like I'm huge. Not. It's not like it's huge amounts. I th I'd say I probably yeah. use about two tablespoons of of half and half. Sometimes maybe it's a tablespoon, and then I use like probably closer to a teaspoon of maple syrup. I kind of have you know gradually lowered that as I have adjusted, but um, but I yeah I really like maple syrup and cream. I do yeah. have a hot though that I'm enjoying. Heavy cream with no sugar, like whipping cream? Um, I mean, yes, you can, you if that's what you want, right? But you just have to count mm -hmm. it. Yeah. So, As what? Well, that would be part of a blue in some way. Um, I don't oh. know. 
yeah, I don't know how. Okay. How much. I just use almond, almond milk. Almond milk. Yeah, too. then and yeah. the nut pods are really good. I did. Someone brought a nut pod that was coconut and almond milk. Yeah, thank you, Lily. Yeah, Lily got it, and it's hazel. It's unsweetened hazelnut, and I do put a little bit of maple syrup in there, just a little touch, just less than I usually do. And why do you use that good. instead of a stevia? I just love maple syrup. I love the way it tastes. I get real maple syrup from Costco um, and we always have to have it on hand. There's just something about it that like, to me, it's just like a richness and flavor that I don't have to use very much, but I can tell. And how do you uh, count that, maple syrup, Deanna? Well, she says on there, like you can have up to a teaspoon and not really count it in coffee. Okay. But, um, and same with like, if you're doing like a splash of creamer or things like that, um, you can kind of have them and not count it. I have one cup in the morning and I have one cup in the afternoon, most afternoons. And now my afternoons, the nut pod. So, which is like 10 calories. I probably use 20 calories ish in it. Mm -hmm. Okay. I have to look for those. So Jen, I think you should love your coffee. Don't, yeah. you don't hate <laughs> yourself. Don't no, hate just yourself. I, I love yeah. my coffee and this is my, I love eggnog. So oh, how, this, how is that? Is it good? It's so good. And it, I don't use a ton of it because it's um, actually pretty flavorful. So you mm -hmm. use just a splash, like a serving in this is half a cup and there, I mean, I would use maybe a couple of tablespoons at the most um, in it, but yeah, I don't mess with my coffee. I'm yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think you just have to you know, try a few and see what you think, see what you're willing, you know, what's good enough still that you're like enjoying your coffee, but you know, try to pair it. How down. do you take it now? What do you put in it? Um, I make my own creamer, but it's basically like homemade sweetened condensed milk with 2% milk, which is awful. <laughs> but it's just something that I enjoy and I'm not willing to give it up. And I've tried like, you know, when I did Weight Watchers, they would mix like protein shakes in it and I've tried it, but it's just not the same. And if I have to choke it down, I'm not going to drink it. Yeah. Right. It's not enjoyable you, to me. Then. Jen, have you tried half and half in your coffee? I've never tried half and half. I so will do like almond much. milk. It's delicious. Yeah. There's, there's less sugar in it. And okay. you may actually find because it kind of feels creamier and you may actually like it. But I'm with okay. Deanna and Lily. Don't mess with my coffee. That's the one thing. <laughs> I will cut everything else out. I stop right. eating meat for a year. I mean, <laughs> I'll do everything, but don't mess with my coffee. Don't touch my coffee. Yeah, <laughs> don't touch my coffee. <laughs> it is so, and, because like mm -hmm. I used to get fully sweetened drinks, right? But I can't do those anymore. So there, you know, there has been some adjustment over the years. Right. And like, if I get something from a coffee house, most really good coffee houses will lightly sweeten anyway, but I always oh. say, you know, like one pump or just, you know, a quarter of whatever you're going to do. Um, and like, I'll get cardamom. So that makes it more flavorful or, you know, to try something that, you know, sounds good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My go-to Starbucks drink is an Americano with a splash of coconut, unsweetened coconut milk and then cinnamon. And if they have hazelnut um, sprinkles, as well so just the so it's it's like really light on calories because it's mostly coffee yeah so. yeah i'll drink their iced coffee but i tell them don't put your sweetener in it because yeah. they sweeten cool. it and i always tell them no syrup it's, almond milk one stevia and i'm out the door i was putting hazelnut um in it and i realized that that was adding up in a very like not appropriate way and so i had to <laughs> i had to cut back on it and then i just slowly weaned myself off and then when i was teaching in the lounge they had a keurig but they didn't have any um stevia they had uh, splenda and so i just started drinking it black i was like whatever like this is what we're gonna do um but if that's your thing then go for don't let anyone steal your rainbow you just yeah, yeah. Wait a minute. All right. Well, thanks, ladies. Yeah, you do it. You figure it out picture. somewhere else. Yep. Let's get a quick picture. Okay. This time I'm going to try to get everybody looking at the camera because, <laughs> sorry. Okay. Everybody's ready. All right. Ready? One, two, three. Nice work. <laughs> All right. You guys have a great night. And uh, so next week we will cover the myths of metabolism. Awesome. Right. Okay. Your labels or whatever you want to talk about. We'll see you later. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Have a good night. Bye. Good night.